Hello, hello, it's Sissy from Absolute Potential Health and Performance here. Today's video is going to go into a stre stretch for the hamstrings, specifically the biceps femoris. So um, a lot of people talk about doing hamstring stretches, but the hamstring is actually composed of three separate muscles. So in regards to myofascial stretching, there are actually three different stretches that we need to be doing to effectively stretch um, the hamstring component. So today we're going to look at the biceps femoris, which is the largest muscle in that hamstring complex. Um, it attaches to the ischial tuberosity, which is sort of that sit bone that we can feel on the bottom of our bottom, um, and a portion of the sacrotuberous ligament, which is also on our pelvis. Um, the sh that's the long head. Sorry, I didn't clarify that. There's actually two heads of the biceps femoris, a long head, which I've just described, and a short head, which attaches onto um, the linear aspera or um, a portion of the femur, so below the actual um, hip joint. Both of those combine to form a common um, insertion into the lateral portion of our um, shin, so below the knee in through the fibula. Because it crosses the knee and because it crosses the pelvis, or sorry, the hip joint, its actions are to bend the knee as it contracts and to extend that leg back, okay? Because of its slightly lateral position on the side of the leg, um, it also contributes to abduction, so bringing the leg out to the side in that position. So to stretch the hamstrings, you can see I've already come into um, hip flexion, having the legs straight out in front of us. Most of us know this as a um, hamstring stretch. We need to have the knees um, straight and the hips basically sitting up like this. And the same for this myofascial stretch. Um, we are going to focus just on one um, muscle at a time, and I'm going to concentrate on the left one this side uh, in this video. So the left one is going to stay straight, and the right leg is just going to be bent up and relaxed to the side. The first part of the stretch is to do a slight internal rotation of the knee. I didn't mention that, but just because of the pull of um, the fibers and the direction they run, they also contribute to slight external rotation um, in through um, the the, the femur, sorry. So we're going to do a slight internal rotation of the knee. We're then going to do what's called a relative AD duction, so bringing the leg into the midline. We're not actually going to shift the leg, we're just basically going to think about shortening the leg, okay? So it's almost like if you imagine these two fists are like your two sit bones, you're basically going to pull the straight leg sit bone in towards you, and that will cause that relative AD duction and bring the femur a little bit closer to the midline. So the way it looks um, is very subtle. So all I'm going to do is just shorten that um, straight leg. And you can see I'm hardly moving. I'm basically just slightly shifting the weight um, that I'm sitting on in, in terms of um, the sit bones there. So we've got internal rotation, relative AD duction, okay? What we're going to do then is now start to tension the um, fascia above and below. So we're going to start off with the upper leg, we're going to tension the pec major fascia. And to do that, you would have seen this in a few other videos, we're going to bring the arms straight out in front of us into external, external rotation. We can do both our arms there again. And we're going to bring them slightly across to the straight leg. From there, we're going to tension the lower limb. So we've already got the knee in internal rotation. We're now going to think about coming into what's called suedo inversion. So we're going to press the lateral part, so the outside part of the foot down towards the floor, and then pull the toes up towards our mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see there, so I'm pulling the toes um, up towards me and I'm pressing the outside border of my foot in towards um, the floor, if there was a floor beneath me. At the same time, we're going to think about keeping that internal rotation of the knee on and pressing the knee down to the floor as much as possible. So you might find um, getting a slight lifting of the heel up off the floor if we're doing that contraction properly, okay? So just to go over again, we've got internal rotation of the knee. We've got a slight adduction, that shortening of the stretch leg into the socket. We've got upper limbs coming into external rotation, fingers back and across, the mid, um, across towards the stretched leg slightly. Then we've got suedo inversion, lateral border down, big toe up towards us and the pressing of the knee down into the floor. Now, the final part of this stretch is actually where we'll feel it most. What we want to think about is bringing the belly button or pressing the belly button straight out in front of us. 
So you might find that you're in a little bit of a posterior tilt, sort of a slouching position. We now want to sit up nice and straight and think about pressing that belly button straight out in front of us. Okay, so I'm just going to come into that position again. And now pressing that belly button straight out in front. And by doing that, what we're doing is we're pulling that pelvis into slight anterior rotation. And that's going to tension up that fascia um, of the biceps femoris um, quite effectively. Okay, so one more time. We've got the legs straight in front of us that we want to stretch. Slight internal rotation of the knee. Slight AD duction, so shifting the, um, the straight leg in towards the socket. Arms externally rotating straight out in the back. Big toe in towards our mouth and lateral border of the foot. Pressing down into the foot. Pressing the back of the knee into the floor as much as we can. Now we want to think about Belly button is coming straight out in front. So we don't actually need to rotate too much to the side. These arms can be straight out in front. Direction of the spine, so chin tuck slightly, nice straight back, and pressing that navel straight out in front of us. Okay, it's important for this, so I can um, see that if you're not paying attention to it, what happens is we start to automatically lift the sit bone over the opposite side. So we wanna make sure we have weight on both ischiums. We're keeping both sit bones evenly on the floor, we're not lifting one side, and then we're coming forward. Okay, and you should feel that stretch basically from the bottom of your foot all the way up the calf into the hamstring, into the back of your spine, and into your arms as well. So, um, as with all those myofascial stretches, the first rep is to get into the position, second rep is to maintain that position. Third rep is to do that maximal stretch, where we're really trying as much as we can to extend the arms, pull the fingers back as much as possible. We're thinking about pulling that big toe in towards as much as possible. We're thinking about pressing the knee, um, the back of the knee down to the floor as much as possible. And then we're doing that maximum um, push forward of that navel straight out in front of us as much as possible. And that's going to be quite an intensive stretch. You can see I'm a little bit breathless from doing that. Um, that's the effect that these stretches have when you do them properly. Um, and that's how you're going to get the most effect from doing them as well.